Hola, hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Soledad García Muñoz, a special reporter for economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights, or REDESCA, given its acronym in Spanish, at the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. I am delighted to be here with you today. So many, many thanks to the conference organizers and other presenters for making this valuable opportunity available to all of us spiritually. I also want to thank all of you who are joining us today. To me, it is an honor and a privilege to be here talking about the importance of human rights, all of them, in this so difficult pandemic context. My talk is divided into three main parts. I will start with a brief explanation about the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights and my mandate, which highlights the importance of understanding that all human rights are indivisible, interdependent, and interrelated. This implies that my mandate is not responsible for a kind of second category of rights, but instead of universal and inalienable rights, as the civil and political rights are usually considered. Then I will look into how we have approached to answer right during this time from the Inter-American Commission, especially uh, looking to the right to health. Finally, but not less important, of course, I will discuss how my mandate is working to protect and ensure the right to a healthy environment in the region. Regarding the Inter-American Commission, it is a principal an autonomous organ of the Organization of American States, OAS, whose mission is to promote and protect human rights in the American hemisphere. For this reason, it has a hemispheric mandate covering 35 countries, all members of the Organization of American States, from Argentina to Canada. The pillars to fulfill this mandate have been the individual petition system, monitoring of the human rights situation in the member states, as well promoting and giving technical assistance on human rights to all states parties of the organization. The commission created by the OAS in 1959 is composed of, of seven independent members. Um, the Commission has an executive secretary in Washington, D.C., and two special mandates. Redesca is the second special rapporteurship created by the Commission in its entire history, and its object objective is to strengthen the promotion and protection of economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights in the American continent. It is a very broad and holistic mandate. We started the, 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 the mandate three years ago. And of course, poverty and inequality is the main umbrella. And then we work for the right to water, sanitation, food, health, housing, labor and trade union rights, the right to care, education, environmental rights, or the business and human rights topic too. I designed, the, designed the, the work agenda for the mandate as the first rapporteur, and this agenda is strongly based on the concept of indivisibility and interdependence of all human rights from a perspective of gender equality, diversity, and intersectionality of all forms, all discrimination. In this sense, my first big message for you is obviously about the importance of human rights. I believe that they are the greatest creation that humanity has ever given birth. My favorite mantra and, and the one that best defines them is that of Article 1 of the Universal Declaration, which states that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. These rights 
are recognized in a vast international body of law, as well as in the constitutions and laws of most of the world's states. Therefore, all human activity or discipline should take them into account. Unfortunately, as we will know, it is not what happens. There is an enormous gap between what is recognized on paper and reality worldwide. However, in the Americas, this is, this is more evident because despite its enormous wealth and natural assets, it is the most unequal region on the planet. That inequality became even more palpable with the pandemic that we are going through. In the Americas, millions and millions of people live in poverty or suffer discrimination in the access and enjoyment of their hum human rights and dignity because they are women, homeless, migrants, indigenous, Afro-descendants, children, elders, prisoners, people with disabilities, etc. And as this pandemic has exacerbated the inequalities in the region, it is not a coincidence that those af most affected are those who were in the most vulnerable situations. In this context, the Inter-American Commission has been taking different measures to ensure a response to the emergency within a human rights approach. One of the main steps has been the creation of Sacroid COVID-19, which is a mechanism where Redesca actively participates. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights installed a special unit, unit uh, to the crisis in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic with the purpose to strengthen the institutional capacities of the Inter-American Commission to the protection and defense of fundamental freedoms and human rights in this context, especially the right to health and other assets. This emphasis in health is particularly important since this right is facing threats never seen before. For my mandate, in fact, actually, uh, the, the right to health is, is a real uh, center, uh, it's, a, it's a crucial right from the beginning of the mandate uh, three years ago, when we started to, to see how the right to health was under threat. And Bredesca, along with the executive secretary and other reporterships of the commission, has been able to develop crucial tools to protect human rights during these pandemic times. Among all of them, I want to highlight two resolutions, number one and number four of 2020. The resolution one of 2020 is named Pandemic and Human Rights in the Americas, was adopted on April, and acknowledge that even if the Americas and the world are facing an unprecedented global health emergency caused by the pandemic, states are born to address the situation within a human rights framework, where human rights must be respected. For this reason, it is stressed that the pandemic and it, its consequences accentuate the importance of compliance with an observance of international obligations in the area of human rights, in particularly economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights in the economic and policy decision, decisions taken by the states. The situation in the Americas, previous to the outbreak creates a huge challenge for the state and to millions of people to take basic measures to prevent the disease. The main reasons is that the region is characterized by profound social divides where poverty and extreme poverty are problems that cut across all countries of the region, along with the lack of or poor access to drinking water and sanitation, food insecurity, environmental pollution, and the lack of adequate housing. All human rights are 
impacted by the different situations caused by the pandemic, the right to life, health and personal safety, the right to work, to social security, education, the right to food, to water and housing, among other economic, social, cultural and environmental rights are being severely affected. The resolution recognizes health as a public good that must be protected by, your soul, by all states and that the human right to health is an inclusive right related to the enjoyment of other rights, understand it, understanding its basic and social determinants as the set of factors that condition the truest exercise and enjoyment of those rights. Three months after Resolution 1, 2020, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights adopted on July another resolution concerning the human rights of people with COVID-19, Inter-American Guidelines. It brought a critical element to the discussion. Specifically, it highlighted how people with COVID-19 were is at particular risk of being deprived of their human rights. Moreover, it includes a broad description of people with COVID to cover people who are thought to have been infected by the virus, virus, people who are in both the presymptomatic and symptomatic phases, as well as those who are asymptomatic those undergoing medical research tests and those who have been killed by the pandemic, as well as their families and or caregivers. The resolution also recommends prioritizing the right to life of people with COVID-19 within public policies and in the provisions of resources and cooperation, protecting their rights vis-a-vis -vis the actions of other individuals, protecting the rights of healthcare workers, and guarantee the rights of family members of people with COVID-19. Concerning scientific progress, the resolution established that participation in scientific progress and enjoyment of its benefits is a recognized universal and inter-American human rights and one that is vital for realization of the right to health. I really recommend to all of you reading the two resolutions, one and four, that I just referred, for a better understanding of the standards and recommendation of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. And I consider that both of them, but especially the number four, are reference for, for, for the region, of course, but also globally, especially the four because it's um, recognizing the specific rights of people with COVID-19. And, and I think it's, it's, it's a very important contribution to the, to the, to the global uh, vision we need to have in relation to the, the people affected by the, the pandemic times we are living. And, and, and after to share this, this information about the work of the Inter-American Commission and the Redesca in relation to the, the pandemic, I also would like to, to share with you Sunabi, some ideas about environmental rights, because one of the priorities of the Redesca is the constant monitoring and visibility of the relationship between the right to a healthy environment with all ESSER and the generality of human rights, especially the impact of climate change on the continent's population and the aggressions suffered by environmental defenders. We cannot disconnect the uh, health crisis we are living with uh, in, in relation to the climate and, and environmental crisis. They are fully connected. And among the main concerns uh, that we have are the deforestation, 
the reduction of the forest layer by forest fires of monocultures, the expansion of extractive industries, the lack of control of risk activities and corruption. Additionally, the Commission and Sredesca have received information on violation of the environmental rights of indigenous people, particularly those located in the Panamazonia, since they are affected by the laws of territory and the forced displacement of the various groups in communities, as well as the serious risk to which the uncontacted and involuntary isolation people are exposed. For all this reason, on August 13, Redesca issued a joint statement with the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and the Environment. With this communication, we both experts decided to call states to a strength, not weaken, environmental protect protection during COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, too many countries in the Americas were loosening environmental safeguards in response to the pandemic. Additionally, it highlighted how the pandemic exacerbated existing patterns of inequalities and how the areas with higher levels of environmental pollution and higher death rates from COVID-19 were the same in which historically discriminated people live. For this reason, we call a state to suspend or refrain from approving or investing in any large scale industrial or ag agricultural activity in the appropriate consultation and participation, if the appropriate consultation and participation mechanisms have not been implemented according to international standards, including the free, prior and informed consent of indigenous people. We also called the member states to take all relevant measures that will provide for the protection of environmental human rights defenders and the prompt investigation and prosecution of individuals responsible for threats or violence against these people. Uh, it's a big concern for the Commission and for its Redesca because Americas Latin America is also considered as the most um, dangerous region for, from, of the planet to defend the nature, to defend environment. So in conclusion, in conclusion I, I, I would like to emphasize that, in, that international human rights law has been laying down the guidelines to ensure the protection of all peoples and future generations. But it is in us the responsibility to ensure that the human rights approach be included in every activity and discipline, including, of course, the environmental epidemiology. Only with this perspective, this huge gap between law and reality will be closed. Thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this so important conference. I really hope we can work together for the respect of nature along of the indivisibility and interdependence of the human rights for every person in the Americas and in the world until dignity becomes customary. This is the title of our late, latest annual report. It is a sentence we took from a human rights defender in Mexico and then from the social movement in Chile. And I hope that this sentence will also inspire your conference. So I wish you, uh, you have a wonderful and fruitful conference for human dignity. Hasta que la dignidad sea costumbre. Muchas gracias.